All right, thank you. Uh, so yeah, uh, Justin kind of said it already, but I am with the Oklahoma Department of Agriculture, Food and Forestry. Uh, I am the Pesticide Program Administrator, so I cover all certification and licensing, uh, private applicators, as well as commercial and non-commercial applicators as well. Mainly what I'm going to go through today will be specifically for private applicators and CEUs and the different types of uh, CEU opportunities we have and things like that. Let me see if this will allow me to go forward. There we go. Okay, so what I like to start off with when it comes to private applicators is uh, an answer to the big question that I get a lot, which is why are we doing this? You know, why? <laughs> Normally it's more like, why have you done this to me? Uh, it's not usually a happy question that I get to answer, but basically where it falls back is with the code of federal regulations. Someone say something? Okay. So it goes back to the code of federal regulations. So basically what happened, hello? Your talk is still in here. We need whoever that is to mute your microphone. Oh, is it? Okay. I wasn't sure what was going on. Okay. So the Code of Federal Regulations comes from the EPA. And so we follow, each state follows the federal regulations for the EPA. We can either match what they do or we can, you know, move forward and make it a little bit more strict depending on our state and our needs. But in 2020, the Code of Federal Regulations changed and I have the, the changes underlined in green where it says the examination process for private applicators must now meet their part 171.103, which states that a commercial applicator must receive a passing score on a written examination that meets the standards specified in their paragraph, which then says uh, basically that candidates must be monitored throughout the examination period. So now that private applicators are set to the same standard as commercial applicators, we can no longer do open book testing or take home exams. Everything must be proctored now. And because in Oklahoma, everything is proctored through a third party known as PSI, uh, all of our testing will now go through there. And because and because we have to meet, because private applicators now have to meet the testing standards of commercial applicators, we've also opened up this uh, CEU uh, process. So the continuing education units. So in our combined pesticide law and rules, and if you're going to be here next week for record keeping, I also go through this. But as it is stated, a private applicator. Uh, means any person who uses or supervises the use of any restricted pesticide for purposes of producing any agricultural commodity on property owned or rented by the person or employer or on the property of another person if applied without compensation other than trading of personal services between producers of agricultural commodities. So most of you uh, spray RUPs or pesticides uh, on your own land, uh, usually for a crop or cattle purposes and license required. It just states here that all, all of those who are going to be applying pesticides, restricted use pesticides, that is, uh, must be licensed. And all private applicator licenses are in effect for five years and may be renewed by application after completion of a continuing education program or written exam approved by the board. So this is a law that we had changed or a rule that we had um, changed to reflect the EPA changes. And then again, we have added H where it says the written examination for private applicators shall be computer-based and conducted at a site determined by the board. So there are two ways to recertify your applicator license. So the first way would be to take your exam through PSI. So it's no longer an open book test and it is proctored. It is on a computer, but it is not 
it is not online. So you still have to go to a testing center to take it. And the only thing that's really changed is that now, yes, your questions and your answers are on a screen and you do need to use a point and click, you know, method for answering the questions. So it's not too difficult. They do take you through about a 15 minute tutorial to kind of get comfortable with the pointing and clicking for the exam. So I know a lot of people are like, well, I don't do computers or I don't, I don't know how to use a computer. Well, it's more, it's more of just a point and click. So reading through the question and then answering, you know, A, B, C, or D. Um, but obviously, if you don't want to do that, the second way to recertify would be to earn enough CEUs by the end of the certification cycle. In private applicators, we end in 2023. So all private applicators, no matter when you tested, have an expiration date of December 31st, 2023. And I want to make this clear as well, because this was also brought to my attention a lot when I was first doing these presentations. Um, but the department is not requiring applicators to earn CEUs. They are an option for those who do not want to retest. And I know a lot of people do not want to retest, especially now that it's closed book and you have to go to a testing site. We do have uh, eight testing sites, but they may not be, you know, close to you. And we, we understand that. And we are trying to get more testing locations available. It's just, it's difficult with PSI and having contracts made with certain testing centers, but we are working on it. So if you are going to need to retest, or if you do know somebody to retest, hopefully no one listening to this will have to because they're going to get all their CEUs by the end of next year. Um, but if you know someone that, you know, would rather take the test for whatever reason, uh, let them know that they can call this uh, phone number, this 855 phone number, or they can go to either website that I mentioned here, but the one with the arrows, uh, that's their most recent site. It takes you directly to the Oklahoma Department of Ag testing with the with PSI. And then all of you, you're going to get CEUs. So in a typical normal cycle, I'm going to read what's written in the combined pesticide law and rules. And then I'll just go through the exceptions that we have given that CEUs were not allowed until January of 2020. So in the combined law and rules under recertification for private applicators in a five year period, the total of CEUs needed is 20 and the maximum you can get in one year is 10. So no more than one half of the total credit units shall be accepted for any one calendar year and credit units shall be obtained in at least three of the five years in any combination so that the total number obtained equals or exceeds the five-year requirement. The continuing education units may be prorated for any applicator whose recertification period is less than five years. And for this period, since everyone had four years, we have prorated those CEUs. So private applicator CEUs started in the beginning of January of 2020. Private applicators that received their license in 2018 or 2019 are in this current certification cycle that expires December 31st of 2023. Now, applicators that have all five years to earn these CEUs must obtain them in three out of those five years and the years do not need to be consecutive, but CEUs may be prorated for any it's applicator running. whose recertification period is less than five years. And since applicators could not receive CEUs until 2020, they have been prorated. And I know I'm repeating myself a lot, but I just wanna make that very clear that private applicators, they've all been prorated. If you took your exam in 2018 or in 2019, your CEUs were prorated to 16 CEUs. If you took your exam in 2020, they were prorated to 12. And I believe 2020 was the last year we allowed paper exams to be entered. And I, I can't rem remember off the top of my head. Um, 
but on a typical cycle, the way it works is that an applicator may not receive CEUs in the year they certified. So if an applicator submitted their paper exam in 2021, they may not receive CEUs until 2022. Uh, CEUs were therefore prorated to eight. And when CEUs are prorated for an applicator, the, five, the three out of the five year rule no longer applies since they didn't have all five years to get their CEUs. And uh, private applicators do not need to worry about getting the CEUs in this three out of five years since they were licensed in the middle of the cycle. But you still have to, um, you still can only get 10 as the max in one year. Um, so that's why Justin was saying in the beginning that you need to get at least six CEUs by the end of this year if you uh, want to make sure that you can get, you know, the remaining next year and then recertify with CEUs. If you don't get six by the end of this year, if you haven't done so already, then, then there's going to be no chance for you to recertify with CEUs starting next year. And then this is just a... Uh, just a grid depending on showing the, the proration basically. So if you tested in 2018, 2019, you wouldn't be able to get your CEUs until 2020 and therefore the 16 CEUs is what you would need. And then, you know, going down. So anyone that took their test in 2021, they only need eight CEUs uh, and anyone that tested this year would only need four next year. Uh, and then, of course, if anyone tests and recertifies that way next year, uh, they will be moved to the next certification cycle as well. So theirs will now be 2024 to 2028. <clears throat> now, once you recertify, it's going to go back to the five years, and this will be a lot, a lot easier. Uh, since you'll have the full five years, uh, as, as long as you get four CEUs every single year, uh, by the, the by the fifth year you'll have 20. So you'll be able to space it out just a little bit. Uh, and with that, if there are any questions regarding what I just covered for CEUs, I'll take some questions because I'm gonna I'm gonna move to the website portion right now. Anyone? Megan this is Bill White. I'll ask I, I uh, last recertified in 2019. Does that mean I have so December of next year uh, to get my C, uh, CEUs, and then in 2024 I don't take any classes, or do I not take any classes in, in 2023? So you'll need to get. I mean, I don't know how many CEUs you've uh, accrued so far, but. 16 total by the end of 2023. Okay. So that you can renew your license. All right. And then starting in 2024, it'll be a fresh new cycle. So you'll start with zero CEUs. Right. But can I take classes in 2024? Of yeah. course you can. Yeah. It's it's okay. a new cycle. So it starts all over. Okay. I'm, I'm confused when they say you can't take classes. Or I thought you couldn't take credits right after you got the new so that's that's when you get cert. So that's when you take the test for the first oh. time. Okay, all right. But since you're renewing, right? Since since you're renewing, it it does uh, it's it's the full five years. Okay, that's what confused me. All right, thank you very much. Yeah, sorry. Any other questions? <laughs> wow. Normally, I have so many questions. Uh, we, may, we may get it done early. Uh, okay, so moving for, on. Uh, yes? I was going to say, thanks for breaking that down. I actually didn't realize that it was tapered off based upon the year that you originally certified. Mm -hmm. Makes sense, though. It's confusing, and then once you understand it, it makes sense. <laughs> so, uh, Thanks. Sorry, that's so complicated. Uh, but moving on, so... I say we have a new website. It's been around for over a year now, um, but this is our website. It's our ODAF website. I, I recommend you write this down. You take a picture of it. Uh, it's really important that you go to ag.ok.gov slash pesticides to get 
uh, information on CEUs and private applicators. Uh, the slash pesticides is the, is the key there. Uh, if you go to our homepage, the ODAF homepage, it's just a lot trickier to maneuver and find the pesticide page. But if you just put slash pesticides in that web address, it will take you straight to our pesticides page. Uh, let's see. So this is what our pesticides page looks like. Again, there's that address for you. Now, if you go down, so what I'm gonna show you first is how to look up upcoming courses, CEU courses. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna scroll down and you go to where it says pesticide licensing. And then when you click on pesticide licensing, it's going to give you a lot of these options. And again, you're gonna scroll down. Oh, I get a lot of calls saying you can't, people can't find what I'm, I'm referring to, but they just needed to scroll down a little bit more. So scroll down to where you see continuing education units, CEUs for certified applicators, and then you'll click on search for available CEU courses. And when you select on that, it's gonna take you to a page that looks like this. And you don't have to worry about submitting anything where it says enter course name or select month. Uh, what I recommend is where it says enter the license category to search for in that drop down menu, you're gonna select on 1A agricultural plant pest control. And 1A agricultural plant is the only category that will count for private applicator CEU credit. So once you select on that, you'll click on find courses with these criteria and you'll get, I just took a screen grab. Uh, so there's gonna be a lot more options than this, but two things I want you to pay attention to when you get these options is the course date, which is here in this green circle and the categories and hours that you'll receive. So unfortunately, Kelly Solutions does not include links or let you know if it's an online course versus a course that you would go to in person or a webinar such as this. But the best indication to tell if it's an online course is this date of course will be like a five-year span or it will be you know, a lot of dates, <laughs> a huge date, date range versus just one date. So that's your indication that it's a course that's ongoing, where if you go to the website to take it, uh, it, it will be an online course that you can take it at any time. And as you scroll down, that's where you're gonna start to see the in-person courses. So they'll have just one date, one time, uh, or it'll be a webinar. And, and then we have contact. We have the contact person there. That way you can you know, get more information if you need to. For online courses, we don't have links, but where it says the course sponsor here, see it says Certified Training Institute. If you put that in your search engine, like a Google, uh, it will be the first option that pops up. Most of the courses or most of the websites that you're looking for, if you just put that course sponsor name in there, it's the first option. And and just, just kind of a hint, oh, I mean, OSU education extension is great, um, especially, especially when it comes to getting CEUs, but there are online courses and they, they are private companies. So there will be fees associated with these courses and they are a private company. So that's why it's important to look at what we've approved. And so when you go onto their website, you can see to make sure that what they've posted on their website is what we have on ours. You know, I cannot control what they put on their websites. So it's very possible they could be putting false information out there, which is why it's important to, you know, make sure you look at the course title, make sure it's matching what's on their website. And if you still aren't sure or have any additional questions, you can always contact us. Um, but they are companies that are there to make money off of their courses. So there are fees associated with them and it's just important to pay attention to what you're taking. And then the other thing to be aware of is the category right here where it says category and in parentheses hours. 
that's going to tell you what category it's been approved for. So 1A, and then in parentheses, how many, how many CEUs you're going to get. So one, sometimes two, like the second one down here says two. Um, so that's a good indication too, to let you know, is it going to be a one hour class? Is it going to be a two hour class? You know, how much time do you have to take it? You know, things like that. All right. So CEU online status check. So the pesticide program and Kelly Solutions, they are currently working on setting up the CEU online status check portal for private applicators. Right now, if you try to go on to check your CEUs through the portal, it will only show up for uh, certified applicators or commercial applicators. So in the meantime, private applicators may check their CEUs on an Excel spreadsheet that we have that we have been posting up monthly. So the pesticide program keeps all hard copies and electronic sign-in sheets as well. And we update that spreadsheet monthly. So make sure you sign in to each CEU meeting. I think Justin mentioned it, I believe he did, where, you know, stay tuned, stay after the full two hours. That way you know how to sign in for this meeting to get your credit. You know, if, if you're not on the sign-in sheet, then you weren't there. That's kind of what we've been telling commercial applicators, you know, and again, we keep these hard copies and electronic copies of these CEU sign-in sheets. So if for whatever reason, you know, your name isn't showing up on that spreadsheet, but you were at a meeting that's just not there, we can always go back and we can look at that sign-in sheet and we can make sure that you're on there. Sometimes it's difficult to read the handwriting. So maybe your name is just uh, written incorrectly, but it is on the spreadsheet. Uh, the other, the other thing would be maybe we haven't received them from the sponsor yet. So uh, make sure you contact your sponsor as well to make sure we get those CEU sign-in sheets. Um, but private applicators should also keep their own records just in case uh, the CEU credit does not appear on that spreadsheet. And what I mean by that is either uh, an agenda, if an agenda is given to you, um, maybe, maybe you received an email for this one, for example, or just keep your own log. And the two most important things I need when something is missing is the date of the course and who put the course on. So the sponsor and the date. Those are the two key things I need so that we can go back and look at the sign-in sheets to see your name. So make sure you keep your own records. Uh, we also ask commercial applicators to keep these records as well. So. Uh, it will really help me out, especially since I, I approve over 800 CEU courses in a year. So I'm not going to, I may not know off the top of my head what course you're talking about. Um, so it's really important to give me the date because that's my best, my best way to look it up for you. All right. So to, to, so to find the spreadsheet, you'll go to private applicator, um, Sorry, you'll go to that pesticide website, that ag.ok.gov slash pesticides again. And you will scroll down to where it says private applicators. It's more towards the bottom. So you may have to scroll a bit. You'll click on private applicators and it's the first option. It says current private applicator CEUs. And when you click on that, it's gonna download an Excel uh, spreadsheet. And when you open that spreadsheet, this is somewhat what you're going to see. So it's going to be uh, in alphabetical order by your last name. It's going to have your last name, your first name, your private applicator number, uh, the course number, which isn't really relevant to you guys, but it will help us out when we are looking at courses for you. So it's the course number. It's the ID that's given to each uh, course. That way we know, you know, who took what. And then it's going to have the course date and then the number of CEUs you got for that course number. So you can do a control F function to find your last name or put in your private applicator number. Uh, when you do that, uh, make sure you see how, you know, take a look, make sure it matches your, your log of all the courses you attended. If for whatever reason you're not seeing it, or maybe your first or last name is misspelled, maybe your private applicator number isn't correct, uh, definitely wanna let us know that, that way we can fix it. 
Uh, a lot of times when you have to write by hand your sign in, uh, maybe we can't read your handwriting. Um, maybe, maybe for whatever reason we we uh, we transcribe it on the spreadsheet incorrectly. And I say we, but really this is Debbie Mandrell that's doing all of this. Uh, right now we have about nine thousand rows of information on these CEU spreadsheets, so it's it's a pretty big document. Um, and she has entered like 95% of those. <laughs> so she, she works hard for you guys. All right, uh, I'm almost done. And then I'll take questions at the end. Um, but this is just a consumer protection map. Uh, this is a breakdown of all of our different categories. Uh, sorry, not categories, all of our inspector territories. And this is just a shout out to our inspectors. They do an amazing job. And if you have any questions related to your area, uh, whether it's regarding record keeping, you know, pesticide storage and anything like that, uh, I definitely would reach out to your inspector and ask them before they do an inspection on uh, your property. <laughs> so it's always best to ask. Uh, if they can't answer the question, they will contact us and get that question answered for you and give you everything you need to know. So definitely reach out. Find out who your inspector is. Um, they're just another another tool that you guys can use to make your gut, your lives a little simpler. Um, but with that, um, if you have any questions regarding your private applicator cards, uh, you're going to want to contact Heather St. Amour. Uh, she does all the, so if you need another copy of it, maybe your name is misspelled, you need to update your information, uh, you're going to want to contact Heather. And that's her email and that is her phone number for CEU submissions. So if, if something's missing on that spreadsheet or you want to send us like a certificate of completion for CEUs that you did, uh, you're going to want to contact Debbie Mundrell. And that is her contact information right there. And I'll just keep this up for a little bit while I talk about online courses. So if you are going to do online courses, uh, I forgot to mention that uh, what they typically do is they will send us a roster monthly of everyone that's attended their courses, but they are also required to give you a certificate of completion for an online course. And it should have your name, your course number, uh, the CEUs that it was given, and then the course sponsor name should be on there. Um, but you can either keep that as your record of attending the online course, or if you don't if you don't trust them, <laughs> you know, a lot of people are like, but are they sending you the roster? Uh, so if, you, if you're one of those people, it's just like, I don't know, I wanna make sure, you can always uh, scan or take a picture and send in your certificate of completion and we will update those CEUs for you. And then with that, if there are any additional questions um, regarding PSI or any other CEU related questions, uh, this is my contact information. And with that, I will see if there are any other questions. This is the fastest I've gone through this presentation. <laughs>